you know what? I can't say enough good things about Ray Flores. So how about we give him a round of applause? Thank you, Ray. And I, we were talking earlier, and in 19, I was here in 94 to 97, and I was like, was, was Tucson a foodie town back then? And I'm like, either I was too poor and didn't have money to go out to restaurants, uh, but I remember a big date night was when I got to go to El Charo. So um, I'm so glad El Charo still exists. And uh, you know, Tucson, the food here is absolutely incredible. My husband and I have sampled so many different restaurants. Of course, El Charo and Charo Vida, Vida are some of our favorites. Um, but every time we go out to dinner, I'm like, that cannot get any better. Like, the food here is incredible. So I'm glad that the rest of the world is discovering what a foodie town we are here in Tucson. But you know, we're here because we are eight days away from our first kickoff. How about that? Is everybody else as excited as I am? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we have some incredible momentum, but before I, I talk about that, I just want to say a sincere thank you to our fans. Um, we are up 19% in season tickets from this time last year. We have our highest number of season tickets sold since 2018, and that is just a tribute to our incredible fan base. So thank you, Tucson. Thank you to the whole state of Arizona. And thank you to every Wildcat fan who has bought season tickets, who is coming, the passion and the momentum. Like, I love this place. That's why I came back. And I know our community does too. You know, we uh, went on a caravan in the spring and from everywhere from Nogales all the way to Phoenix and Glendale. And we had stops in between what really warmed our heart was the incredible fan base. So I cannot wait to see you all in eight days as we start the Coach Brennan era. And you know, Coach Brennan, we had great momentum, that great 10 and two season, uh, but Coach Brennan is absolutely taking it to that building on that foundation and taking it to that next level. How about we are top 21? First time, Nate's first time since what? Yeah, how about that? First time Nate tells me since 2015. How about that? And have you guys seen TMAC yet? Oh my gosh, TMAC looks incredible. First time we've had a preseason first team All American since when? 2015? 2016. First time ever. They just started the poll in 2016, so let me be real. Um, but you know, we have so many incredible things to be excited about, and we cannot wait to see everyone uh, in eight days. Uh, but again, I just want to say a thank you to our fan base. We have some exciting new initiatives. Um, we're really big on surveys. So we've sent out a few surveys and Tony Daniel is gonna talk to you a little bit about some of the changes that you'll see this, uh, this fall. Um, but expect, I'm sorry to our fan base, but you're gonna get surveys after every single game. And then on Mondays, we look at your surveys, we read them all and we try to make adjustments um, because the fan experience is so incredibly important to us. So Ray Flores talked a little bit. You had a great chance. How about the elote bites, by the way? Oh my gosh, are those amazing? Right? That's right. I know, those are, <laughs> thanks for going there. Um, but you know, it's, uh, it's an exciting time of year. I cannot wait to get started. You know, the other day, um, we had the chance to go with four of our student athletes to uh, Big 12 Media Days. And we had a bunch of uh, challenges on the travel, et cetera. But, and I got to spend about eight or nine hours um, with TMAC and with Gunnar Maldonado and with Noah Fafita and with Nuku. And I really got to see them and see um, what incredible people they are. You know you're onto something very special when your four best players are the best leaders and best people. These are young people who were carrying luggage um, without being asked who went to the pilots and emptied the plane, who made sure that everywhere they went, they left it better than they found it. So these are some really special young people. And I think that's what makes me so excited for this football season because they, and I see a lot of our colleagues in the back and they know these are some, to be able to have a full Arizona stadium and to debut this team, there is nothing more special about being under those lights. So we cannot wait for eight more days. We have some special fan initiatives for you and we're gonna make it so incredibly fun. So again, we're gonna work really hard 
to make this incredible community proud. So thank you all for being here today. Thank you to Ray Flores. Thank you to all of our colleagues who are going. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and uh, thank you to all of our colleagues. We have some new, new food offerings, some new grab and goes. And uh, like I said, we're gonna keep enhancing that fan experience to make it the fiesta we all know that it's going to be. So with that, does anyone have any remarkably easy questions for me? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, maybe not easy, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> not this chair, I'm just, just kidding. Be about uh, some stuff that came out about uh, house settlement and Ohio State. Oh, that's where you went? We're talking about the yes does. I am just kidding. And yeah, no, it's, it's important. All right, you want me to go serious now? Yeah, All right. Talk about maybe losing the 150 student athletes at Ohio State, training some programs as basically club programs. Are you seeing that talked about in what is there, what are Arizona's plan on its going forward? You know, we made commitments to, we have 22 sports. I think Ohio State has maybe 36 or something a little higher. And so I understand what they did and, and why they had to do that. But we make commitments to those young people um, when we recruit them. And so I think someone asked me um, on my first day, was it in this room, Nate? Okay. Uh, wow, it seems like so long ago, doesn't it? Uh, someone asked me if I plan to cut sports. And we're not going to cut sports. But do we have to evaluate every one of our expense items, every one of our revenue opportunities? We do, because we have that pressure and that reality of that $22 million. Um, we started out with, I think, about 16 different models. As new information comes because of the House settlement or as new information just becomes in talking with our colleagues or evaluating with our Title IX consultants, et cetera, then we continue to adjust and refine. We listened to each one of our coaches and we met with them and got their feedback as to what's important for their programs. And so we've taken those 16 models, we took it to 12, we took it to eight, and now we're at about four. But there's still a lot of information that we don't yet know. And so we can't, we wanna make sure that we are competitive, fiscally responsible, and fair. So that will be our, our guide, if you will. And then also um, the University of Arizona Athletics we represent $266 million in annual economic impact. It's a really big deal. I know what it was like in 1997 when we won the national championship. This is a championship level program. And yes, we all read the EY report. We know we have some challenges and we have some work to do, um, but that's what we're, we're gonna all roll up our sleeves and we're gonna link arms and that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Does com being competitive be nationally viable is that 22 percent followed you know the previous year will arizona always be at that top level of expenditure with the competitive programs in the nation i think you're asking me that what will we will we spend exactly that amount right now we're going to look at what do we actually need to be competitive right because once you give it you can't take it back so what is it our programs actually need and then what's going to be the standard in our league? What's going to be the standard in the top 25 programs? What do we need to be competitive and not just competitive? Like we're not in it for participation trophies. All right, let's be clear. We're in it to win championships. So what do championship programs need? And one thing I really appreciate about Coach Brennan um, and Coach Lloyd and all of our coaches, they're not going to spend just to spend. Like we're going to spend because it make, that, this is what we need to do. So, and, and remember, student athletes, they, um, I'm gonna go back to my first meeting with our, uh, with our football team. And I think it was like a 6 a.m. meeting. Uh, my, I think it was my first or second day on the job. And they were, I was over um, like right in the, in the end zone. And I looked back at, at section 10 and I talked about why I came back, why I came back to the University of Arizona. And I came back because I love this place. And I asked several of our young men, why did you stay? And it was the same thing, because they love the University of Arizona. Now we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to invest. And you know what, like any massive change, uh, which is what this is, right? We're, we're seeing at college athletics transformed in front of our very eyes. Um, any massive change, you know, there's gonna be some bumps and bruises along the way, but that's why we have to make sure that we're guided by our principles, we're guided by our core values, and we're going to be competitive, we're gonna be fair, um, and we're gonna be very good uh, stewards of our resources. I mean, you're designed working in the administration here. How much has the game day experience evolved the last five or 10 years? Uh, 
I don't know if I could. So I love the fan experience part. Like this is a big hallmark. And Tony Daniel, Tony Daniel is one of the best in the country at it. Um, whether it is at a prior institution, whether he might have had a mascot jump out of a, um, an airplane once to bring down the game ball, uh, whether it is pyrotechnics or whatever the case may be, you know, we recognize that we're in the memory making business. And while we cannot control what happens between the baselines, what happens between the hash marks, I wish I could, although no one really wants me calling plays. That would be remark remarkably bad. <laughs> I would be like, throw it long to T-Mac every single time. No, just kidding. Um, we cannot, we can't control that, but what we can try and do is make every guest's experience the best it can possibly be. And that's what we're trying to do. Yes, ma'am. So what role does, does screen play, I think mean, particularly every year we have people who get, get as Ray said, who are coming in here, they have no knowledge of Tucson. They don't know we're a fleeting town. What role does this food and we're leaning of the menu play in that damn experience? It's a big part, right? We're not only competing for, um, for people's resources, we're competing for their time. And if we can say, hey, you can come have um, sample El Charo, you can come sample some of the incredible food that we have here in Tucson, then that, may, that just adds to the overall fan experience. And that's what we're about. So I want people to come here, come hungry, because my goodness, again, have the elote. It's been out, elote, elote bites are phenomenal. And that's not even getting into the churros. <laughs> <laughs> you out. <laughs> and as far as that, on a first impression basis, saying with these fan bases coming into Tucson for the very first time, how key is it to make that first impression on the fan experience at Whoop fans? You know, I think the secret is going to be out that Tucson has the best food in the entire world. When the folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, that's the great, that's the cool thing about being in the Big 12 now is all these new fan bases are going to be able to come to Tucson and discover the incredible gem, the incredible city that we're so blessed to call home. Any pals? All right. Well, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tony Daniel, who's going to talk about our fan surveys, um, what we've seen initially, and then also five of our new priorities that were, or five of our new initiatives that we're doing in the short term. So with that, Tony Daniel, it's... And uh, Tony Daniel is our Senior Associate for Revenue Generation. Thank you, Desiree. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Ray, Ian, thank you for a, a fantastic opportunity uh, to, to showcase what, what Desiree is talking about and, and our introduction to, to the Big 12. Um, we, we are extremely excited to be here. Eight days away from football. Um, it just gets your blood boiling, it gets you excited, and, and we can't wait for, for our fans and, and new fans around the country to, to come to Arizona Stadium and take in everything that Tucson has to offer. Um, I will dive into the, the, the five uh, initiatives. We've talked to our fans and we will do extensively, we will talk to them extensively over the next, uh, next year and, and especially this fall as we dive into the football season. We've done surveys, we've, we've heard your remarks and, and the things that you like and don't like, and, and we're going to, to look at addressing some of those things here. And I'll start with our food. The concession offerings, you're seeing a lot of that today. Expanded concession offerings, expanded locations, expanded um, uh, food and beverage items. Those things are gonna be on full display as you, as you enter Arizona Stadium this fall. And it, it, it's really exciting to, again, show our fans and those around the country coming in what, what they can expect with a little taste of, of Tucson here today. Um, another thing that we've heard a lot of is how we use our video boards. What can we do to expand replay options? What can we do to expand the fan experience with statistics? So our teams are working uh, around the clock to, to expand those offerings. We've got some new camera solutions that we're going to be implementing in the stadium this year. Um, John Daly and his team uh, are, operate our video boards. Those, those folks are working tirelessly to make sure that you're getting a first-class experience in our stadium because we know the television. You can watch those things at home. You're getting replays all the time. We want to make that experience even better in stadium because you're getting the live product. Um, so that's, that's kind of our, our third initiative. Uh, increased fan engagement during games. We heard a lot of surveys, uh, responses about our, our DJ, our in-game DJ service. We will be getting a new DJ this year at Arizona Stadium. He's uh, done work with Arizona Cardinals. He's the DJ for the Phoenix Suns and Arizona Diamondbacks. He will be traveling from Phoenix 
here to Tucson with us. So we're excited about that improvement. Um, again, I mentioned the new camera equipment that will only improve the fan experience. Seeing yourself on the big screen when you come to Arizona Stadium is, is a big deal for fans. So that'll also be improved. Um, and then finally, our fifth, uh, our, our fifth uh, improvement is the return of the Cat Cruiser. We've heard a number of, of surveys, uh, responses about the Cat Cruiser. And for those that are unfamiliar, that's a, uh, a s shuttle service from Phoenix to Tucson for our fans that have season tickets and tickets to our games. They can ride round trip um, for, for $25 a game to, uh, from Phoenix to Tucson and, and back. And so that's uh, a return of that is, is an exciting proposition for our fans and, and just another way to make sure our stadiums are full. Desiree mentioned the excitement that we have around our season ticket holders. And, and those things. So we can't wait to, to unveil these things here in the coming days to the public, but excited to do that with you all today and, and give you a sneak peek into the five improvements. So I'll happily take questions if there are any uh, on those two things, but. Can I just add something? Uh, I just got added to the Visit Tucson board. And we all know how important it is to Tucson and bragging marketing for our tourism industry and for visitors to our county. And I, and I saw graphics at the first meeting that had the four or five top revenue sales tax, Fed tax generators in our community. Well, we know Gen Show is one of them, right? Everybody has been in Tucson for more than a year ago. The chat, how can Gen Show is to our local economy? But the other four yeah. were U of A related. Homecoming, Heritage Weekend, moving, which we just went through. There was an article, some Ted Noe was. This is an economic engine. When they say buy local, we need to also say buy wildcat. And we need all of you to do that. Because I, these folks here that we employ, need the U of A to be successful. Period. Good. Fair day. Today. Yeah.